episode 28 of the Renit podcast. I'm Roz. I'm Emily. What? Is that it? Is that the end of the podcast? <laughs> what do we normally say? I've completely forgotten this. It's only okay. been like two Hello. weeks since we last did one. Why am I so... I don't know. Roz has forgotten how to podcast, yeah. so we'll just let her, have, you know, catch her brain up for a second. Hello. Happy January. Yeah. Um, it's kind of grey outside, so I'm hoping that the light is good enough. Yeah, we've, is, we've got but... pretty much all the lights on in here, but it's not hugely bright. It's quite dark today, because yeah. it's January, and that's yeah. what January does. Um, yes, hello, we've done 28 of these, not that you'd know, No. judging by the professional ones, but... <laughs> well, no one's paying us to do Welcome. that, so, you know, it's definitely an amateur podcast. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram <laughs> as Alfie McDork. Oh yeah, that's what we normally say. Well done. I'm Rosaroo on Ravelry and Rosaroo Nee on Instagram. Excellent. Right. Do you want to start so I can do this a little bit? Okay. Uh, what I'm currently knitting right now is... Oh, it's hard to show you it all because it's on a, I'm in the middle of a row and I'm on a circular needle and mm. it won't stretch out. But this is the back of my squared cardigan. I'm sort of past the bit where you cast off for the sleeves. Uh, I'm just knitting my way up the back now. I've got to knit like about six more inches, just plain knit a row, pearl a row. And this is what it will look like. Only oh, you've pulled your book apart again. Yeah. Grey, obviously. It's, I'm knitting it out of Rowan felted tweed in. I don't know what colour this is. It's a grey colour. I don't have a ball band. I'll find another ball. I've got a whole bag of balls. Uh, it is colour 164. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Everyone's favourite grey, 164. You know, I would have said that was more of a 167 myself. Would you? Yeah. If you're going to be picky about it. Okay, well, maybe that's like the, the dial art is, you know, a maybe. bit off. Maybe. Oh, the cat's back. The cat's going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll put a bit in the end of when the cat was in the podcast for like two seconds and then was like, you're touching me, human. I don't like this. So yeah, this is my cardigan. It's from Knit to Flatter by Amy Herzog. Um, it's... I didn't get gauge with my gauge swatch. So I've been doing maths. Oh, no. To, um, to work out how it should fit. And the last time I knit a jumper of hers, my sort of, I think it's camel coloured one. Yeah. Um, I did maths to make it fit and then the back ended up too big so I had to knit the front oh, yeah. one. So once I've knit, completely knit the back, I'm going to use Emily's steamer and steam the back. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> to, yeah, it's useful for like cleaning the flat and also steaming the knit. Mm, it is. It's multifunctional. Um, you can make lattes with it as well, apparently. What? You know, you steam the milk. Yeah. You can use it for that too. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Multifunctional. Oh. Do you put the milk in the thing? No. You When you steam milk, you have milk and you put the steam into the milk. Oh, okay. So you you turn the steamy thing on and, yeah. it, goes, and it makes the milk go all hot and frothy. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Please don't put milk in my steamer. Yeah, no, that would like dunk <laughs> it all up and make it terrible. Yeah. So what was I saying? Yeah. So I'm going to block steaming. That's what the, you were I'm going to steam the back to block it, and then I will see how things are actually turning out and whether I'm going to need to make the front smaller again. But I did maths. I did. You know, I've got like post-it notes and bits of card stuck all over the pattern, being like showing the maths I did. And you are measuring it against another jumper as well, aren't you? This jumper, yeah. Yeah. To, just like, to make sure it's kind of the roughly the right. Yeah. Because I, I want it to be a really long cardigan. I want it to be, it's going to be slightly longer than this jumper. Mm. But it's going to be sort of one I wear with skirts. So that, you know, it doesn't come all the way down to my hips. It's more like a waist length jumper. Um, yeah, so I'm knitting along with this. I've got ten balls. And I'm on my fourth ball for the back. So I think the back will take four balls. And then the fronts are going to be slightly smaller because they've got yeah. like a cut out bit. Not cut out bit, but the neckline is lower. Mm. So I should be able to do the whole cardigan in the grey. Because I have got two balls of blue. Let me do my blue. 
which is the very exciting colour number. Oh, this is 167. No, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's exciting. Yeah. And um, every so often, there's quite a lot of bits of sort of black in the grey, but every so often, there is a little bit of blue, which is basically the same blue. And there's bits of grey in the blue as well. Yeah. So it would it would tone totally nice. together very nicely if yeah, I had right. to use like blue for the button band or something. Mm. But I'm thinking I probably won't. Yeah. So. Um, Maybe it's your jumper. Yeah. Your choice. Yeah. Um, I might do blue anyway, but possibly not. We'll see. I'll see how much yarn I have left when I've knit the fronts and the back. Cool. Right. So that is what I'm actually knitting right now. Um, this is something I started ages and ages ago, uh, like last year, and then stopped knitting for Christmas because I was knitting Christmas things. Um, where somewhere, a little safety pin. Can yeah, you see the safety it's pin? Yeah, only somewhere. Where is it? It's just there. Yeah, like yeah, a couple there. of rows after the safety pin was where I stopped. So, in this last week, I've more than doubled the like size of the jumper. It's there not it a jumper; is. it's a cardigan, but it's only the back piece. So yeah, there's that. And then what are you also knitting? Is... We went out of focus for a minute then. Oh dear. Been knitting on my electric Christmas tree socks, which are, oh, I'm so tangled. I'm knitting these two at a time from uh, the inside on the outside of the cake of the yarn. And they're a little bit tangled. They're there are the socks. They're sort of. I finished the gusset decreases. So they're sort of four inches, maybe. I need to do another. I don't know. Yeah, maybe another four inches and then I can put a toe on. But they have speeded up considerably since I started knitting them again. One and two, I've put them on my new Chow Gu uh, interchangeable sock needles. So I find them, the joins are that bit nicer. They, they don't catch mm. the yarn and they, it slides really smoothly, like from when you're, because when you're doing two at a time, there's a lot of, there's like even more putting the, pulling the cable about than there is with Magic Loop. So that's a, a, a major irritation if the, the, this bit is really, hard to get the stitches onto, you see what I mean? But I did have it on a slightly longer cable. I had two cables joined together and then I was tightening them up because they'd started to come loose with the little tiny key things and I over tightened it. Yep. And I snapped off one of the little cable connector things into the end of the cable. So I ruined the cable connector and the little short cable. Fortunately, it was only the short cable. So I can still knit the socks on this cable, which is quite long. And now that I've finished the decreases for the gusset, the socks are that bit smaller, so I don't need quite as much cable, but yeah. That was a little bit upsetting because that was a Christmas present and it's like the middle of January and I have already broken part of it. But you've got a replacement on the way. Yes, fortunately another Christmas present I got was an Amazon gift card. So I have used some of that to uh, replace the broken decrease. So that's good. So that's, uh, that's one bit of knitting I'm doing. And then another bit of knitting I'm doing is a new thing that I've cast on. Somewhere in this bag. It's got two balls of yarn in, so I can't find the... Uh... Ooh, itchy nose. Sorry. Right, here is the, the knitting. This is... Some green! Another sock. This is... This is some West Yorkshire Spinners... Stripey sock yarn? I don't know. They don't put the colours on the ball band. No, they don't. And I don't think I have the ball band. Oh, I do have the ball band. I can tell you what number the colour is. But they, they do have names, their colours. Okay, it's got... I'm not sure. One of one of these numbers is the dial art and one of these numbers is like the name of the colour. So it's 06 It's the green stripey one. Yeah. It's the green stripe one, and the green stripe, the dark green stripe, is the same green as the chocolate lime that I bought for the Christmas socks. Mm -hmm. So I did a heel in that. But these socks are being knit with my 2.25 
millimeter chow goo needles in a magic loop fashion and I've just pulled the loop out so again um, and I'm knitting them they're not ribbed I mean they've got a ribbed cuff but then they've got a plain just knit leg and a, a plain heel and a different heel turn that I normally do because these are they're not a pattern sock but they're like following the basic pattern from the uh, sock knitting book that I got for Christmas mm. which is custom socks by Kate Atherley so to like measure my gauge for doing a pattern sock I thought I would knit a plain sock because when I looked in the book uh, the, she doesn't list gauges. I normally knit my socks on a two millimetre needle and that gives me a gauge of almost 10 stitches to an inch which her patterns, like she's got a whole table for like the size of sock and your gauge and the length and like all the different stitches and numbers you'll need and they don't, she doesn't go up to 10 stitches to the inch <laughs> So, my socks are fairly, fairly hard wearing. Oh, there's a very sad cat trying to get into yeah. the flat. Oh, Please let me in. I want to be on your podcast. Please let the cat in. Oh, I'll leave the window open. It shouldn't be too noisy. It's a Sunday. There's no one in the car park. Yeah. <laughs> if it's really windy, you might hear some wind noise. But yeah. Um, this is... Hang on. Hang on. That's our occasional cat, there as in go. she occasionally visits and she's... Oh, she just went under the tripod. Yeah, I hope she didn't joggle, joggle the tripod. Mm, but yeah, so I'm knitting this and I've tried it on and I've got like a big gap. Well, not a big gap, but like a gap. The heel doesn't fit right because it's a different type of heel. The heel turn I normally do uh, sort of comes out as a triangle, whereas this one is oh, yeah, it's like a square. square. That's cool. So... I'm not entirely sure whether I should just rip Ooh, back. Here. Oh, hello. Yes, spot by the cat. Here she is. Da -da -la. Evie. You're being camera shy. Yeah. There she is. This is the occasional cat. We're not allowed pets in this flat. We're not allowed to have pets in this flat. So she's not our pet. She doesn't belong to us. She belongs to somebody else in this family. But she visits a lot. Yes. We don't feed her. And we don't... We Sometimes she stays overnight because the window's open and she hops in. But, yeah. you know, not always. But she kind of wanders around. And she goes into other flats as well. So, you know, she's kind of everybody's kitty. Yeah. Um, but she likes to come and hang out. So this is Evie the Occasional Cat. Yeah. And if you I pick her up... that should be the name of the podcast. Yeah. Evie the Occasional Cat. Yeah. Uh, if you pick her up, she gets really annoyed yeah. and will, like, make noises at you and leave. But if she comes and stands on you in the middle of the night and you don't... Uh, Give her attention. Yeah, like she also gets annoyed. So, you know. so she's now the star of the show. Yeah. Well done, Evie. Anyway. We had, a, on. we had one of the dogs on the podcast. We did. Back in the early days. We so did. We, we had Rosie on the podcast. Yeah. We've now gone through a whole... <laughs> I'm sure Evie, the occasional cat, will make them. Um... Yeah, look, swishy tail. And now you're famous on the internet, Evie. Yay! Yeah. With, um, you know, millions of subscribers and viewers. and. Right, keep talking about your Okay, so on. yeah, it's got a the cow. big, um, this type of heel kind of makes a big sort of it goes down quite a lot here so it doesn't fit on I did a sort of the sort of length heel I would normally do for the way I expected the heel turn to fit which is the same way as the heel turn I normally do and I don't know it's if it's because I didn't do any slip stitches and so it's not as pulled in and as tight but I don't know whether I should go back and sort of omit a few rows of heel and then put the heel turn in and if that would solve the problem or whether just to keep knitting and have like a sock that doesn't because the rest of it fits fine so I should probably rip back because then I'll have a wearable sock yeah but like I've got past there and I've finished the gusset decreases and... is it wearable um well it's got a big sort of baggy bit here and I think because it's sort of baggy, it'll move about and it'll wear through and it's right. not got any slip stitches. And so it might wear out, but I, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll knit it 
Oh, well, you finish could repair it. it or something. Yeah, and then knit the other one to match, but try and knit it a bit smaller in the heel so that it fits better. But I'm not entirely sure. You know, I think that reducing the length of the heel would sort of stop it gapping under my heel because it would sort of pull up. But I, I haven't tried yeah. it to be sure that that would, that would be how it would work. But yeah, it was going along really quickly because it's all knit. There's no, there's only purling on like on the way back on the heel flap and on the ribbing. This is why I don't like doing rib socks because I hate knitting ribbing so much. Yeah. I hate that. Even if it's like three by two or like really big ribbing, I just, yeah. it doesn't have brain in. And like if I don't concentrate for half a second, I'll get the pattern off and I'll be like, I have no idea what's going on. You're saying that you're knitting a ribbed sock now with a cable yeah but i'm paying attention to them okay <laughs> and it's more interesting yeah because ribbing is boring and dull. but you have to pay attention yeah that's true yeah so yeah these are these socks are kind of like a giant swatch for a pair of pattern socks from my book of pattern socks but also i want to end up with wearable socks so seems fair yeah i've kind of I might carry on knitting them and just see what happens. I'm, I'm, that sounds like I'm expecting, like, I finished the sock and now suddenly it fits. Whereas it didn't fit, like, midway through. But I'll try them on again later and show you and see if you think it's a big problem or not. Yeah. But, yeah. So, but those are all my works in progress. Lovely. What are you knitting, lady? I am trying to work out what the hell we're doing on this cable. Right. Um, I've only got one work in progress because I finished lots of stuff. So yeah. That's quite exciting. Um, and it's this beauty. So this is um, the mock cable sock. And it's toe up and sun. So I did the heel, just done the heel, and now I'm working on the leg. And I'm trying to figure out what on earth I'm doing with the cable pattern. Because now I have to do it all around the leg. Whereas before I've just been doing it on one side because it was a foot. So the bottom is blank and the top has a cable pattern on it. Um, and I'm doing it magic loop. Look at this. And it's from Socks from the Toe Up, which is a good book that lots of people have uh, by Wendy D. Johnson. And uh, yeah, it's the mock cable socks, and they look like that. Ta -da! Which is good. Uh, this is the first time I've knit a sock from the Toe Up that has a heel in, knit into it. The rest I've got are just afterthought heel ones. So that's the first. Toe up heel, excuse me, that I did. And uh, I used uh, like a gusset and a slip stitch heel flat thing. Heel. Yeah, it looks kind of a weird shape because it's got a cable pattern on it and it's like ribbed a bit. It kind of squishes up. My foot is not that shape. It's not that long and thin. No. My foot is the opposite of long and thin. But you've um, tried it on. But it does fit. Just obviously, you know, when it's stretched properly the cable pattern is a bit wider but i really like it and i'm knitting it out of somerset yarns um they have this in their sale i think it is 75 percent bfl superwash bfl 25 percent nylon sock yarn in pumpkin spice and it's a nice orangey there you go that's pretty that's yeah. pretty accurate it's a nice orangey warm color i like socks in this kind of color um yeah and it's Somerset Yarns, and I like them. I've got loads of stuff by them. In fact, one of my finished objects that I will show later is uh, in another one of their yarns. Um, yeah, so I'm liking it. I do, I'm enjoying doing Magic Loop, and I'm enjoying doing From the Toe Up. It's nice to have different options for sock knitting, not just do cuff down all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's it, really. And I've done, on Friday when I left work at lunchtime, I'd knit about that much. Well, the toe, basically. I'd knit that about that much. And so this is Friday, yesterday and today. It's not bad. It's like the whole foot of a sock. It is the whole foot of a sock. Although I wasn't really doing anything else. No, So because it was the weekend. Because it was the weekend. So that's what I'm knitting. That's literally the only thing that I am actively working on. That's on the needles. Have I finished my Christmas socks? No. <laughs> Have you touched your Christmas socks this year? No. Have I? Um... No, actually, I don't think I have. It's all right. It's a long time till Christmas. No, we're, we're good. Yeah. Okay, do you want to talk about your finished objects then? I will. Um, I'm wearing one of them, which is this. 
this is the Maud cardigan. Oh, that's a bit floofy. The Maud cardigan that I was knitting last. I remember where I'd got to. I think I might have just attached the arms or something. I don't remember. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think so. It's a raglan cardi. I mean, it's a cardi. You probably got a nice shot of it when I got up just now to let the cat in. <laughs> um, I really like the sleeves. They're nice and long uh, with a nice big cuff. And I can also fold the cuff back like that to get a bit of a shorter shorter sleeve if I want to, like that. Mm -hmm. So there, either way. Yeah, it's nice. It's very warm because it's 100% acrylic. It's the Aldi acrylic. So it definitely would have taken me more than one ball because they're like this. They're huge. Yeah. Um, so it probably took a ball and a half maybe there are no pockets on it yet and i will put pockets on there used to be pockets like down here oh yeah I've gone. Gonna have um pockets. and it will have some pockets on it. i just haven't put them on yet and i also haven't put any buttons or buttonholes on because i wasn't going to have it with buttons um it does kind of go a bit of a funky shape if you don't have it buttoned up because it like because the front of it is designed to sit around here like this bit down here and then it goes and then it goes down when it doesn't do that it goes a bit of a weird shape but um it's all right i don't think it'll be the end of the world if i don't put buttons on it i'll see how it goes but it's very 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 warm and comfy and yeah that's my first finished object and considering i finished my jumper last time and i finished my cardi this time and this i started working on months ago and then stopped and then picked it up again in the new year after christmas sometime yeah. i picked it back up again because I wanted to get it finished. And I did. Hurrah! So that is a cardi that's done. Should I do the other one as well? Yeah. The other one, I've got to take my hair down for this. Mm. It's my sock head hat in the grey rainbow colourway, which is the other Somerset Yarns oh, colourway. And it is a delight, obviously. Sock head hat is a very popular pattern. You can find it on Ravalry. Yep. Um, and this is in the... I think it's just grey rainbow. I don't think it's neon rainbow yeah. or anything. But the rainbow is very bright. The rainbow is very bright. So, as you can see, the rainbow kind of goes in a swirl. You can just about see it. Put it the right way around. So the rainbow goes in a swirl. It kind of pulls just about there. It's got like a striped bit on the other side. And then, as I did the decreases at the top, it kind of went into a cool, like, circular pattern like that. Very pretty. pretty good. So I quite like bright. it. It's very nice. And then... Uh, Cheers up a, oh, a grey January. It does. Maybe I'll wear it for the rest of the podcast. I'll look like a loon. Oh, it's quite long as well. I wonder if I can fold the brim up a bit and that might make it a bit shorter. That's the whole point of a sock head hat. I know, but it's very long and it doesn't like sit very well. For some reason, my head just must be a weird shape. Sometimes the sock heads don't slouch. They just kind of look weird like an elf's hat. Yeah. But, there you go. So that's my other finished object. Ha ha. That's it, really. That's okay. about it. Cardi, sock head hat. Yep. Okay. I'm going to take this off. I'm now very warm. Yeah. Wearing a thick cardi. I might take the cardi off as well. And you're wearing dungaree, so you've got I like am, three layers around I your I have foot. a million layers on. Whew. So I'll take this off. Okay. And you can talk about whatever yeah. it is you're talking about now. Just finished a room, so that's nice. Right. Oh. I have my one finished object. Because I'm not as, you know, cool and excited. <gasps> it's my Holly Berry socks. Those are so nice. I like them a lot. They are all West Yorkshire spinners, apart from the heels. Uh, the stripy, patterny, this bit is Holly Berry. And this bit is Cayenne Pepper. And then this is a sock yarn in a cream colour. It was in my drawer of sock yarns without a ball band on, so... I can't tell you what it is, but this is what my standard sock is like. It's a two by two rib, a six by two rib, which carries on down the foot, a slip stitch heel, and then this heel turn is a sort of triangular one. And because of all the slip stitches, it's a lot smaller and it stretches a lot less, especially in this direction, than the one I was showing earlier that I'm knitting on. So. Obviously, because I'm used to knitting socks like this, I know how to knit them to fit my feet. And I don't know yeah. the other ones how to knit them to fit my feet. So, yeah. Basically, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'll have to work on that. But I'm very happy. 
with these socks. Uh, they will be a pair of Christmas socks for this Christmas coming up in like You're so 11 months. Yeah. So even if I don't get, if Wet Shorter Spinners come out with another Christmas yarn this Christmas, I don't get it finished. I'll still have a new pair of Christmas yarn, Christmas socks to wear because I'm like a pair ahead. Although this yarn came out in 2016. So you did. I'm caught up, but I'm also ahead. No, I haven't Excellent. worn them for Christmas yet. But I don't think I've worn them at all. I just tried them on. So yeah, these can go in the drawer. Ooh. Very nice. I like a crazy alien bug thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm very pleased with these. Um, that's all my finished objects. Cool. Right, spinning. We don't have a huge amount. No. Um, we went to Spinning Guild. It's, it's, a, it's a low, low, low content podcast today. Yeah. We did go to Spinning Guild, and I spent most of Spinning Guild untangling the yarn for this and knitting my cardi. So I didn't actually get a lot of spinning done at Spinning Guild. Also, we but had to have a committee meeting in the middle of Spinning Guild. We did Guild, have a meeting, and all which that took like an hour. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I'm spinning. It's it's kind of currently in bits because I'm not spinning it all the way through. I'm like splitting it into little bits. But um, this is the Red Hot Poker. Um, Superfine Merino and Silk by Hilltop Cloud um, and it is 70% Merino, 30% Tussa Silk and it's a rainbow because I'm going to make a rainbow hat like the one that Ross has so that I don't steal hers anymore yeah. in theory. Um, hey, you've not stolen mine for ages. Like, I haven't, I think... that's because I haven't worn a hat for ages. Okay, You've got your one new sock head hat. You don't I have. Need... That's got a, a neon rainbow. Yeah and also when I wear my hair up here I can't put a hat on. Um, which is why someone has done a sock head hat that's not like that has a, a ribbed section at the top as well So you wear almost like a very big sort of headband slouchy yeah. headband thing you can put your hair through it So yeah. I might do one of those at one point. Yeah, so if I have my hair up, I can still put like put a hat on Yeah, um, but I'm splitting this into little warm. bits to spin because because I want it for a hat and Because I want to get the whole rainbow in if I spun all of it if I when I started knitting a hat I'd only get to about like halfway through yellow and I would have run out of hat um, so I'm just doing it in small bits so I can get a full rainbow in the hat. Yeah. Otherwise it'll be a huge hat like this. And you want a two-ply, don't you? Yeah. So I'm splitting it up so that I get the right amount for a hat. And that's it. And I've only spun, I've spun the blue and I'm starting on spinning the green. My wheel's just over Yeah. There. So that's what, like seven grams? Something like that. I have no idea. Well, a quarter of the blue would be five grams. Okay. So I'm guessing seven. So. Fair enough. Yeah. And then the last thing I have to show you is the fibre from this month's Hilltop Cloud by the yes. this Club parcel. It is called the Thin Blue Line. Super duper pretty. Yeah. When I first saw the name, but without seeing the fibre, I thought it was about the police. But thankfully it's not. It's about space. 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 It's pretty. Yeah. It's about the thin blue line that you can see, which is the Earth's atmosphere in photos of the Earth taken from space. So there's like a thin blue line around the earth and that is our atmosphere but this is really pretty it's kind of a turquoisey color Ooh. and it's got bits of sari silk in what is it made of mm. it is 25 percent sari silk 12.5 percent bamboo rayon and 62.5 percent merino mm. so it's, it's very soft yeah then. it's soft and it's got bits of sari silk Ooh, there uh, I don't know if you can see the bits of oh maybe that's yeah, a bit of um, little pinky bits of uh, the bamboo. Oh, um, no, the bamboo. Yeah, I'm, bamboo's kind of shiny. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, it's very cool. I think the sari silk are these little sort of textured bits yeah. that are like in bubbles and like little curls and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it's very pretty. Very pleased with it. this is M's half, so I should it be is. very nice to it. Yes, you should. Also, I should start spinning more because you know we're I'm packing the packages up. Every every one of them comes in one of these. Yeah, and um, there's quite a collection massing yeah. on the shelf. So and there's a shelf over there. Get wiggly. Full on. of fibre. Yeah. yeah, that's not that's not even a bit of it. Most of it's in the bedroom. Yeah. So but it is. It's filling up with these packages. And it then... is. So you know I should probably get my spin on. Yeah. Ha -ha. Yeah. Which I have done some spinning, but not enough to show you. I've just been working on more of the Time Travelers Club, the South Africa package. And I'm spinning it really oh, fine yeah. and it's taking forever. I re Next time I do a spin, I'm definitely spinning some long draw things. Mm. Just to speed things up. For like... I need to do some long draw as well. Maybe that will be my uh, Tour de Fleece thing for this year. 
or if you wait till November, the guild is having a workshop on I'll Love Drops. Wait till November, okay? I'm just saying. If you want to learn from like a, a person who's paid to teach this kind of stuff, as opposed to me, <laughs> you could learn from uh, a expert. A expert. Expert. I think that will be my tour de fleece okay. thing. Spin stuff, long draw. Okay. Um, and I can probably use up some of these braids. I imagine that yeah. would be my my thing for this year. Try and use up as much of the the braids and stuff that I can. Yeah. Seeing as we did like a huge amount of fleece for last year's. Yeah. Although I do still need to spin the J curb as well because I do want an air cardi. Yeah. Oh, so much to do. I'll try and get the J curb. Well, Tour de Fleece is June, isn't it? Yeah. So like from July? about June, yeah. So from about like April. Yeah. The weather's pretty nice. Yeah. So once the weather gets nice enough for me to sit outside and card the J curb fleece, I'll do it then, which I could do during like the Easter holidays. Yeah. So it'll probably be quite nice. That's Spinning cool. plans. Or, um, you know, you could sit out in any, of an evening or at the weekends when it's nice yeah, weather. Yeah, but because out. it's a fleece, I want to card it outside. Yeah. I don't want to card it indoors because I'll get it everywhere and yeah. it'll, like, get stuff everywhere. So I'll try and card it and spin it before Tour de Fleece, basically, is what I was saying. Okay. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. You'll spin Because there'll be some nice weather. Before Tour de Fleece and then yes. spin colourful stuff. Yeah. There'll be some nice weather... A month or so before Tour de Fleece, so I will have time to sit and card and spin the Jacob so I can get a cardi started cool. ready for the following autumn. Oops. That seems to work. Oh, and it'll be um, Fleece Fair as well in May. Yeah. Oh, exciting. Although we have probably enough Fleece that well, we don't need to go to the Fleece Fair. I mean, we did spin a lot of Fleece. Yeah. So you know. But you still have a whole unwashed Fleece. Oh, what? The uh, Texel. Texel. Yeah. yeah, so and you've got another I'm washing more cotswold. Okay, quite tempted to get more cotswold. I did like that. Okay, that wasn't a whole fleece. No, I know. Yeah, but I did like it. Yeah, and I'd quite like some more. Yeah, so I think that would be good if you get some fleece, but not a whole fleece. Right. Then that will not be as much fleece. That's less fleece. Thank you for giving me. <laughs> thank you for giving me advice on not having too much fleece. I know you are an expert in this matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking to me, you've got more fleece than I do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know but you know you I live feel... in a small flat and i have a spare bedroom so i can like just... your mum's at the other end going i'm sorry who has a spare bedroom <laughs> say that again who's where do you live exactly <laughs> yeah. whose spare bedroom are you filling up with fleece can you just uh can you just clarify that for yeah. me please so yeah <laughs> anyway that's i think that's it, it isn't yeah. it marvelous okay I don't think we've got any other announcements or stuff to do. No, we're not doing any giveaways at the moment. No, not really. Um, we not really, we're not. We're not. <laughs> um, no, uh, we're just doing some knitting and some spinning and yeah. that's about it because like, I'm back at work and it's cold. and. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe or leave please a comment. Do. Or... You may see Evie again. If you wish to start a fan club for her, I'm 100% fine. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Um, but yeah. But thank you ever so much for watching and we will see you again in a couple of weeks, yeah. I assume. Yeah. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Bye. Here we go. Are you coming? Are you taking part as well, are you? Yes. Okay. I heard there was a thing happening and I want to be included in the thing. Please. It's the Ros, Emily and Evie show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you put this bit in. Make sure you put this bit in the podcast. <laughs>